Hi friends and fellow crafters, today I am so excited. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take secondhand finds and share the process of with you how I would make these items over to make them beautiful home decor. In today's video, I just recently went to an auction where I had a big score. I scored some old vintage flower seed grain sacks. Oh my heart. Oh my heart. So I'm going to share with you what I'm going to do in today's video with some of these. So along with some of these grain sacks that I'm going to share with you, I picked up some boards at my local Habitat for Humanity. It's like $2 a board, I believe. Um, they're already painted white. They're probably somebody's trim baseboard, but Yes, I love being able to find salvaged pieces, especially if they have already been painted in the colors I love. So to get them distressed a little bit more, I'm just taking some 80 grit sandpaper. Um, they have a lot of layers of paint on them. It seems to be all white, so I'm just going to get that paint smoothed out. I'm not going to fill in any nail holes. I love that patina of it all. I just want to make these boards nice and smooth. So I need to cut these down. They're much too long for the project that I have in mind. So, but I want to be able to get two pieces out of each one of the boards that I sanded down. They're the same thickness. They have the same patina of paint kind of going on. So I'm going to cut them down to the 12 inches and I'm going to be making some wall pockets. Now I have two boards pretty close match to the same size. I'm never going to say that they're perfectly the same size. And I remember I had some metal tins that I might do on a couple of these boards. I'm going to see how many wall pockets I can get out of these boards. Not quite ready yet. I can't put my wall pockets together yet. I need to glue my pieces of wood together. So you can see there's an un painted that was probably along the bottom of the trim um and so i want to make sure that my white is sticking out but i do need to get these put together so first off i'm going to be cutting down some paint sticks to use as braces to keep them nice and sturdy i need to cut my paint sticks down though so i'm going to use a japanese saw um just to share with you how to cut them but i actually did go over to the miter saw and finish cutting them all but I just wanted to show with you that paint sticks are pretty darn easy to cut you could probably even just use an exacto knife so I would like to make these stay together so not only am I going to use those as braces but I'm going to add a little bit of the type on wood glue a great wood to wood glue um, so just a little bit on I do need to glue my seams the two seams that are going to be butted up against each other also <music> So now to make sure that they stay in place, I'm just going to go ahead and put a couple staples. And it's funny because if you did not know, we are moving houses. We bought another house and we're selling this workshop that I'm working in right now. So a lot of our tools have been uh, at the new house. So I'm lucky that I found a staple gun that was still in our shop. Oh, this is getting to be where we need to get over to the new house. If you have not checked out that channel, the journey of GCRs, um, getting a new house, moving over to a workshop. It's down in the description below if you're interested in the behind the scenes of a YouTuber. Most definitely do not have to run your paint sticks all the way out to the end. Just a little bit to go over to, I just wanted them to have some good support. So we got a really hard edge there. So I wanna make sure that when I'm putting the fabric on it, it doesn't poke through and that it has a nice soft edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some 80 grit sandpaper and sand that down so it kinda has a bevel on it. 
you wanted to, I've been known to do this also. I'll take the staple gun and between the two slats of wood, I'll add another staple just for extra security because you know we're really manhandling these pieces of wood when we're they're not it's not a completed project quite yet so i want to make sure that it stays together that i have the boards butted up i individually sanded the whole board itself but i want now i want my distressing to look a little bit more uniform so just a quick sanding to get that and then also taking off that sharp edge there's really sharp corners i want these to look like they've been worn and they've, they've always been together. So rounding the edges like this with that 80 grit sandpaper just gives it a little bit more of a worn look. And one final step before I can start creating these into beautiful home decor is I'm going to add the hanging system. So I'm going to drill a hole. I'm just using a ruler so I can do my placement and I'm placing it in about an inch and a half but I just want to make sure that um, my holes are going to be level to pull some wire through. Now I love this aged wire. It's black. It kind of leaves a little bit on your hands but I love that it's not shiny new galvanized. So and I actually bought this roll at a hardware store. So I'm just guesstimating on how much I want to hang. I want the hanging system to come from the back to the front, that way it'll lay flat against the wall. It's nice and sturdy. I'm just giving it a nice little bend, um, trying to even it out. So I'll poke it through the holes and then I'll do a little twisting motion with some needle nose pliers to make those the twist larger than what the hole is so that the wire stays in place. <music> I start off with these little pieces of tin now they're two-sided so I've got the rusty crusty edge and I've got the painted edge and so I'm going to make one of both but I'm just giving it a little bit of bend a little bit of cuppage so that I can stick something inside this pocket so oh there's just something about that natural rusty crusty that just has my heart so I'm just eyeballing center it doesn't have to be perfect it's that perfectly imperfect but I am going to get some age screws um, that we just happen to have in our hoard and um, put some holes just drill some holes in all four corners to attach this to the board Oh my goodness, is it this not already gorgeous? Now I have some of this baby grass that I had from like a trendling um, piece of greenery from Hobby Lobby. So I'm just going to add some of the stems in. I love baby grass because it has that slight brown to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and bend them. I'll glue them in place once I get the array arrangement kind of the way that I want it to be. Because the parts I'm using do not have wires, they're kind of falling a little bit forward. So I have this beautiful black star. I think just popping that on, attaching it to it will hold up the greenery. It'll give a little bit more visual. It actually does have a hole on the one side that I've tucked underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole there. Um, not only hot glue it in place, but I want to make sure that it's not going to pop off. So with that hole, I can put a screw right there and it'll definitely hold it um, in place with no worries. use another piece of that tin but I'm going to flip it around and use that beautiful aged 
Oh, is that not gorgeous? So I'm going to do the same thing. I need to give it a little bit of bend so it has a little bit of cuppage to be able to hold something in it. So same process as before, drilling holes, putting some salvaged screws in there. If you don't have salvaged screws, you could always use a little bit of patina, a little bit of rub and buff, something just to age them a little bit so you don't have shiny new screws. Oh, I am so happy that I found these savage pieces of wood. And I actually found them at an antique store, so never underestimate what you can afford going through an antique store, y'all. They were $2 a piece. What a steal. Some floral to these, I have this baby's breath. I like, it's a personal preference if you like the bright white and the bright green. I liked the muted tones of this. So these are stems from the stem area in Hobby Lobby that it has succulents and other little things that are never on sale, but I like the little bit of size. I bought the big stems before, and these are just a little bit smaller than that. So these are so easy just to tuck right in. You want to add a little bit more embellishment to this with some rusty, crusty stars. Just a couple at that bottom area, just to add a little bit more visual. Since the paint color of the tin is really muted, and then you got the really muted of the baby's breath, it's just nice to have that pop of color. Yeah, rust is a color. it's time to start working with some of the grain sacks and some of those grain sacks that were in that stash I didn't even count I must have had 50 grain sacks in that pile so this is some of it that was already broken apart it has some beautiful advertising wording on it that's just gorgeous um so I thought oh my gosh these are perfect for wall pockets so I'm just going to decide I can't fit the whole wording on it or it would cover up my whole wall pocket <laughs> um I could have made it you know but I already just made a whole bunch of them um out of what wood I had so now I just need to cut this up so I have that wording just had to decide what part of the wording I wanted to see. And now I'm just going to do a little roll over here just to have a little bit of a clean edge, a little bit of a seam, so you know that these sacks will probably fray if I don't. Like this sack was made to be a little wall pocket. Look at that almost perfect of a fit. I'm just trying to graciously you know tuck it up a little bit trying to get as much as I possibly can now the print on the green sack is not level it's not even by any means you know they just quickly stamped them and got them on their way so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue it but I also will staple it in place wrapping it around um, into the back So now I, I purposely left it so it had a pucker. <laughs> so it wasn't so tight that when I went to add some of this baby's breath in there that you saw the stems. If it was really nice and tight, that's all you would see is those lines of the stem. And this is still those same um, stems from Hobby Lobby. These might be the bigger ones. Um, um, there's some that are in that one section, and there's others that is it with the whole florals. The I yeah, these are the bigger ones because I can. They have more wire to them, and I can bend them and really make them look full. After I finally got them the way I wanted them, I decided the bent down just looked too fakey. So and then to fill in that bottom part where you see a lot of the stems because I like that height that it's giving it I'm just going to take off some of the littler pieces and hot glue them in there
I have this smaller seed sack. I love the graphics on this. So, and I'm actually going to go long way. I'm going to have it running down my wall pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and get that seam. There's like one major, major seam to this to cut off. And then the rest is a piece of fabric fabric so that's where I'm going to make my cut to cut it apart and the bottom stitching is usually all a mess so I'll just cut that right off with this wording my main focus is that alfalfa so I kept it long at the bottom I'm and you know I can still use the other for another project on another day but that's where I'm going to make my cut for this one I'm not going to wrap it around to the back I'm going to attach it differently to the front This one I want the frayed edges so I'm actually going to help a little bit of the top fray just a wee bit more by just pulling some of those strings. So to hold this fabric in place on this wall pocket I am just using some upholstery tacks. These are black in color. I'm just holding them with needle nose pliers so I can kind of hammer them in to get them started and um, go ahead and tack it down. So I'm going to do my four corners first, then go into my middle, and then work to fill in from there. Just kind of eyeballing. The, the, yet again, it's that perfectly imperfect. It doesn't always have to be square and right on. Sometimes it's just nice to make it look like it was just, it's just an old piece of decor. Really kept adding them on until it didn't pucker. You know, like, okay, well, that's too much space. It's puckering. So that's how I decided because I wanted it to be nice and sturdy because I have some more greenery that I want to add to them. So I'm not even sure which type of greenery this is. Um, this, again, is from Hobby Lobby. We got to love when there's 40% off, very cost efficient. But what a nice pop of with that linen color, that those black tacks. Now I know that these are heavy, so see how it's dragging it down, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get them in, and then I'm going to weed through all that greenery and staple them actually in place so that it's not dragging that fabric down. So what if you don't have any seed sacks? Can you make your own? Oh, heck yeah, we can. So either this is the piece of the other side of the seed sack that I'm using, or you can use drop cloth fabric, which is one of my favorite things to use. And I have some of these yummy, these awesome, amazing stencils from Funky Junk Stencil, and I'm going to create my own seed sack. So I just wanted to share with you, not only can you use tins for wall pockets, seed sacks for wall pockets, but you can use leftover pieces of fabric, drop cloth, and wording. I'm not going to use the whole stencil. I'm just going to pick out which wording I want, but I'm going to go ahead and attach this one. I'm going to wrap it around just like I did the very first one I did with fabric fabric on that back, gluing it and stapling it so that it stays in place. You notice on these, I cut a corner of that out so I didn't have so much bunched up fabric when I went to do my tucking of my corner there. So I'd rather leave a little bit of extra of the fabric to be able to hold it and pull it and glue it. And then for this one, I'm going to tuck under that edge so that it does not fray after I cut a little bit of the extra off if I need to. And um, yes, just give it a little bit more hot glue to tuck it under so that the edge is not fraying a little bit more of 
a finished look than I did that very first one. You know, it's kind of a trial and error as you work with something because, you know, you have the idea in your mind and you're just trying to create it. Let's add some wording. So I'm going to go long way on this. So all that wording, that farm blood, the grain, and I'm going to use the date on this also. So for my color, I'm just going to use some of the IODs black ink. That'll be perfect permanent for this fabric. Just a sponge dabber, which is a makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree store. And then, yep, I'm just going to hold it in place. It does not have to be perfect. It does not have to be even in color. It's supposed to look like it was just quickly stamped on there. I don't know about you all, but I think that blank space is just crying for some green sack stripes to go along with this amazing wording. So I'm just using some Dollar Tree masking tape. I'm just ta butting that right up to the edge of the wood. And then I'm working in, in from there. I'm just going to do a couple little skinny stripes, taping off that top area so I don't get anything on the wood. And then while I'm inking it up, I will fold over those edges so the stripes are going all the way down. This one, I have a much larger Rusty Krusty star. Oh, I can't pass those things up. They just have my heart. And then I'm going to be adding some of these pit berries. They're the same stems that come from Hobby Lobby in that whole bin of little stems like this. And I think that color coordinates with this fabric beautifully. <laughs> Also want to get my pet berries to kind of stay where I bend them so the same thing I did with that greenery I'm gonna do with these pit berry stems and staple them into place For my last one, I'm going to do the same thing. I am going to share with you an idea of how to make your own sacks. Now, this one's still a little piece of that fabric. I want to use up what I have. Do I care that it's stained? No, not by any means. That, to me, is a beautiful distressing. But I love the word seeds on this stencil, and I love the 10 pounds. So it really makes it seem like it was on one of those bags that is going to look original. So same process of folding it over. I really am liking that look. I like the tacks. Don't get me wrong. It's just a different, it's just a different look. So if you noticed, I do not have that pulled all the way up. If I used the whole seeds, um, I wouldn't have any place to stick any greenery in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try anyway, um, as I'm doing my color on the fabric over the stencil, I'm going to wrap that bottom S around that fabric a little bit. We'll see if it works out.
screener I actually picked up at an antique store. Yeah, y'all, it was $2 a stem. I'm like, okay, well, I'm pretty sure that's cheaper than what Hobby Lobby has it. But yet again, it's heavy, so it's pulling down the fabric. So the trick of using the staples to staple it in place, once you kind of get it arrayed the way that you want it, arranged the way that you want it, is working out perfectly. Now, the only thing about this stem, I love the price, but it's really, really green, 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 almost too fakey for me. So there's an easy fix. It's plastic. So let's just take some of the Fusions chocolate <laughs> paint and just dab it on here and there to kind of give it more of an aged look to blend it all together. So just randomly, it doesn't have to be covered. It just has to be just dabbed here and there, just making it a little bit more visual of a patina on that greenery. So thank you so much for watching today's video and oh my goodness yeah not only did i want to show what to do with a seed sack those worst for wear ones that you know i, I still want to try to salvage the nice ones because some people just like to use those in decor or make pillows out of them or whatnot but i would i was more than happy to take a few of them apart and make create something out of them and then share with you how to use um, the funky junk stencils to create your own seed sacks. And what is there about a wall pocket? It's just so stinking cute. I did a video earlier where I put a lot of little rusty crusty kitchen items in them. Also, there's, oh my gosh, just so much you can do with those little wall po pockets and change them out for the season. They are just a lot of fun to make. And then you can't help but love going to Habitat finding already painted wood couple dollars aboard. So check out your local habitat. Thanks again for watching today's video. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out this channel for the first time and you love secondhand finds, you love making items over, doing DIYs, please hit that subscription button because it does not cost a thing. You'll see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to.